Hello dreamers and explorers of fantastic worlds. Well, it's been six months or so since uh, last spoke, but I'm back and hopefully with a vengeance. Uh, much has changed since the last podcast aired, if that phrase makes any sense. Uh, mostly uh, the changes are in regard to geographic positioning. Uh, as Facebook followers will be aware, the squid wanted to move south to uh, escape the warming oceans with climate change. And so naturally I had to follow, uh, so I've moved close to Hobart to be in, in closer contact with the squid. Um, it's been a big task, um, more for me than for the squid, really, he just it just swam. Just swam down and went, okay, I live here now, and everything had to adjust to its presence. That's what comes of being a gargantuan squid. A uh, bit more effort moving a uh, family interstate but uh, my amazing wife were by my side a very resilient son we've done it and we're settling in pretty well I'm sitting out uh, in the backyard right now so you might be able to hear the odd bird tweeting uh, they're all into Twitter of course down here uh, got a few little Garden gnomes looking at me under some ferns. Yeah, it's a bit cold, but it's much better than sweltering away trying to remember what autumn meant when, yeah, I believe it didn't really happen up there in Sydney. So I'm. You can complain about the cold if you like, but I could not have done another Sid Sydney summer. And I'm much happier down here. I'll take a, I'll take some nippy toes and frozen noses any day. I also find it being down here much more conducive to a creative mind, uh, at least my creative mind. Um, so now that we've settled, hopefully the creations name, part of the name, Giant Squid Creations, hopefully that will be more than honorific and there will actually be some creations to share with you soon uh, starting with the promised trio of cats the audiobook so the first one will be pose the black cat which i hope will be available in a week or so and that will be followed by bram stoker's the squaw and conan doyle's the brazilian cat uh, they're a fun bunch of tales all a bit macabre Oh, very macabre. Okay. Yeah. But lots of fun. Um, in other news, I've been accepted into a candidature for my doctorate at University of Tasmania. So that's very exciting. Uh, that starts in July. So obviously I'll be doing that full time. That's going to affect my output. Hopefully, I don't think it'll decrease it too much, uh, but it will affect... The direction of it. I, I'm wanting to put out a lot more in general. Um, just post as much material as I can. More of these podcasts, uh, you may have noticed, probably haven't, but have a look. I've been doing more blog posts, which are a bit just random, trying to be entertaining, um, and just keep things, things light or thoughtful. I think... These are trying times, and I would like to present both the light, fun side of life to keep things as positive as possible. But I think I think it would be wrong of me to completely ignore the politics. I don't know. I'm very wary of going down the line of sharing my politics via the squid, and so is the squid. Um, besides my obvious references to climate change, but then that's obvious, so it's not really a thing. Um, but it's also important that I post a lot so that you don't forget about me. Not so much me, uh, but the squid. Um, if the squid thinks it's been forgotten, it may decide to remind everyone of its existence, and that could be a bit dramatic and possibly traumatic. Uh, if you've not seen the movie, the original movie of the Clash of the Titans, where 
The Kraken Destroys the City. I recommend watching it. Um, it was based on an earlier The World's Forgotten Me scene from, um, well, the squid says it was an ancestor, but I have questions. I have questions about the squid and he, and its age. Um, so, like, subscribe. Um, yeah, for, for the sake of the planet. It's not about me. <laughs> anyway. Um, moving on. I have read and watched a lot in the, in the time since I last spoke, so I won't go into everything. A couple of quick shout-outs. The Last Jedi. I, I cannot express how much I loved it. That movie, it, it moved things in my chest. It, it's, it, it had such an impact. I'm amazed. And, um, okay, not everyone's going to feel that. Not everyone's going to like it. But seriously, people, I do not understand the way people go on these days and the hate that they, they've poured into that movie. And there is so much love in it. Um, it's bizarre. Anyway, um, I also, I finally, for, I, fi ah, sorry, I finally saw Wonder Woman. Um, I've been looking forward to it. I actually quite liked Man of Steel for a Superman movie. Superman is a... I don't see the point in the character of Superman, but um, Man of Steel kind of made him work. I felt it was fine. Suicide Squad I enjoyed a lot. Um, admittedly, I still haven't seen Batman vs. Superman. I suspect I'd like it more than most people, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. So hearing that people liked Wonder Woman, I thought, I think it was great. I didn't, I was very disappointed. Um, it just, it didn't move me at all. I didn't feel there was any real point to it. It was just, it felt more like a, a lecture. And then it, failed its own point on the lecture in a way by having Ares turn up anyway and uh, it just and yeah it just it just didn't work for me I think it could have I think it I'm not sure but but yeah for me no it didn't work finally though Thor Ragnarok flip side that was great it was just fun um, all the way through uh, it didn't, it didn't, you know, it didn't plug the heart strings, pluck the heart, heart strings, sorry, plug. Uh, that's what cholesterol is for. But, um, it, it, it was just fun and enjoyable. And still, you know, there is stuff in there that you can, that you can think about and you can, there is more to these, to these blockbusters and action films than a lot of critics and, and the art here, oh, you know, it's not, it's not real. And it's just going for fun and entertainment. Isn't it? Well, yes, it is, but it is also, there is a lot more there if you could be bothered applying the, your brain. Uh, in terms of reading, um, I'll just mention Edison's Conquest of Mars by P. Garrett. Um, I'd, I'd heard it mentioned in a, in a few histories of science fiction. Um, and it was it was not one that I thought I would ever find a copy of, and there I was looking in a bargain bin section out at the front of a secondhand bookshop up the Blue Mountains before we moved, and there it was for two dollars. I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, that's fantastic. What it is, it's supposedly a sequel to H.G. Wells's The War of the Worlds. Um, I'd be fascinated to know if H.G. Wells ever knew it was written. I'm sure at some point someone mentioned it to him. Um, I doubt whether he bothered to read it. Um, it's... It doesn't bear a great relation to to The War of the Worlds. Um, and then its source material was probably not Wells's original. It may have been a uh, plagiarized copy that someone did that was set in Boston um, 
and released in Boston, funnily enough. Um, those were the days before the internet, it was a lot easier to, to pull off that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, aside from the fact that the world, the Earth had been invaded by Martians, and the Martians had been defeated by germs, there was no real relation. It was just a, it was just a starting off point for uh, this conquest story, or the space exploration followed by a conquest. Um, there were some fascinating ideas in there. Um, some would go on to be quite influential within science fiction, for whatever science fiction actually is. And some would even turn up in reality, I think. Although most of it, no. Uh, quite hilarious in many ways. Looking back uh, at the time, it was probably um, a bit more plausible from their understanding of things. But it, it, it was a fun book um, from that point of view. And I'm still amazed that I found it just sitting there. And yeah, I, re I recommend looking it up if you just for a bit of fun. Um, or at least looking into it. I can't, I can't say it's a, a rollicking read. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit slow, but it's just, it's just fun in its way. Uh, I think that's all I've got for you at the moment. Um, if you've heard the barking in the background, that's just Scooby. That's what he does. Uh, he's a bit old, a bit cranky. He barks. Uh, but he's okay. He's out here now, his little jumper, trotting along, seeing what's going on in his world. Um, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. And I encourage you to all do the same. See what's going on in your world, the world around you, and in the world of... I was going to say imagination in a really bad way, and that's just... The, the cliche just kills me. So just um, read some books. And keep dreaming.